All right. So problem eight is almost the exact reverse of the problem that we worked the other day. They want to know the concentration parts per million. Glass beaker breaks, 100 milliliters, cabinet, one cubic meter, ambient temperature, all the same sort of stuff, just working in reverse, okay? So what we gotta do is just a couple conversions and then we can use that handy dandy formula they gave us for concentration in parts per million. So we have a molecular weight, we have the specific gravity. We have, so we know that at ambient temperature, We have 24.45 liters per mole. That's going to become important as well. What else do we need? I think that's about it. Oh, we have 100 milliliters of toluene. And one meter cubed. Okay. So, we want to eventually get to where we can plug into this equation. Concentration milligrams per meter cubed times molar volume divided by molar weight. Okay? So, we've got molar volume, that's this guy right here, and then we've got molecular weight, that's this guy right here. So we really just gotta find this part. So that means that we need to know how many milligrams of toluene we have. Okay. In order to do that, we need a conversion factor. Well, that's our specific gravity right here. Specific gravity is the way that we find the density of something. So, for instance, this 0.865, that 0.865, the specific gravity equation, is equal to the density of toluene divided by the density of H2O. And the density of H2O is equal to 1,000 grams per liter. What's unique about this is that if you wanted the density in other units, you would just use different units for the density of H2O. So say you wanted it in, you know, pounds per cubic foot. If you had the density for water, you would just multiply by this number and that would give you the density of toluene in pounds per cubic foot. But grams per liter works pretty good for us right now. So you're going to start 0.865 is equal to density of toluene divided by 1,000 grams per liter. So in order to get rid of that, 1,000 is on the bottom. So we're going to multiply both sides by 1,000 grams per liter. That's going to give us, so 1,000 times 0.865 is going to give us 865 grams per liter. Okay. Then, with this number right here, and knowing that we have 100 milliliters, we can find how much, how many milligrams of toluene we have. Because we can convert this, this is 0.1 liter, because there's 1,000 milliliters in a liter. 
So that would be 0.1 liters. So now we've got 865 grams per liter is the density of toluene, and then we have 0.1 liters of toluene. So if we take 0.865 grams per liter and we multiply by 0.1 liters, our liters will cancel and we will get 86.5 grams of toluene. Now we want to go to milligrams. How many grams, how many milligrams are in a gram? There are a thousand milligrams per gram. So going on to the next page. Just like that. Same sort of thing. So you've got your 86.5 grams of toluene. You multiply it by 1,000 milligrams per gram. Your grams will cancel and you get 86,500 milligrams. Okay. Now, Let's go back up here and look at this equation. What do we need? We need concentration in milligrams per meter cubed, right? So our volume is going to give us that last little bit, right? So if it was, I mean, we'll just assume that the volume is not 1. 86,500 milligrams. And then you're going to divide by whatever the volume was. In this case, volume is one meter cubed, so it doesn't really change anything. So the one just goes away. It's just like any other number over one. You don't really need it. So we got 86,500 milligrams per meter cubed. And that's going to give us our concentration in milligrams per meter cubed. Okay, now we can plug it in to our formula. CMG meter cubed times 24.45 liters per mole. And then divide by 90. 2.13 grams per mole. And that will give us our concentration in parts per million volume. So just put this guy right in here. gives us it's a number close to 22,000. 22,955 parts per million. Okay, that's it. That's all you got to do. That one was a little bit easier than the other one. Um, so what do we need to know to work this problem? It's really only one equation, right? It's this guy right here. Everything else was just unit conversions. And that's kind of how most chemistry problems go. It's just a lot of unit conversions, making sure you're working in the correct units all the time. So there's one more in this stack, I think. I'm going to work that one out next.